I don't have little shamrock pictures unless I go find a shamrock picture. Oh, sorry. We are headed to our Easter basket. Okay. In your Easter basket, you have six Reese's eggs, four caramel eggs, two eggs with money in them. I have a quick question. Uh, it's like the, the candy Reese's. Do you say Reese's or Reese's? Reese's. Okay, so Reese's. 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 Everybody says Reese's, though. No, everybody. No, it's nothing. How do you say it? Reese's. Oh, my God. I say Reese's. It's Reese's. No, everybody says all that really, really All right. So, this is where probability gets more interesting for you all. The ones I just did on the screen before. When I ask you the probability of wind, no wind, picking a sophomore, whatever. How many people or things were we picking? I said, what's the probability of picking a sophomore? One. We were picking one. Most of the probabilities you've done up to this point, you've always just been picking one item. So we'll it gets a little more interesting when you start picking multiple items. Because you just can't say it's a number over a number anymore. <laughs> I'm sorry. So in this case, I want the probability that I get three Reese's to make Jake happy. So what makes me happy is I'll alternate it, okay? <laughs> so I have three. I want to get three Reese's this time. So my question is, how many ways to see? I want you to do successes over total here. Okay. But I need to be successful. What do I have to get to be successful? Three Reese's eggs. I have to get three Reese's eggs. I can also make <laughs> So the problem is, there's six in there. So to make, I need to get three of the six. I need to get a hint, a group of three out of the six. Because I could get egg one, egg two, and egg three. Oh, you get egg two, egg three, egg four. Yeah. I could get one, five, and six. There are different groups of those eggs I could pick. So I need to know how many groups of three eggs are in there. So if I'm picking groups, what am I using? Uh, combination. So now we're using combination. So you're going to go, okay, on the top is successful. So I have to get the Reese's eggs. How many are there? There are six total eggs in the basket. How many are we picking? We want to get three. Okay. On the bottom, you have to do total. So on the bottom, you still also have to do a combination because you have to know how many groups of three eggs can I pull out of these basket, basket. Period. How many different groups of three eggs are there? So how many total eggs do we have to choose from? There are 12, and we are picking how many? And we are picking three. So then you'll have to do it as a combination. If your, your calculator is more than likely going to spit out a decimal at you when it does this. Um, if I don't care, you can give me answers as decimals or fractions. I'm not particular on this. If you give me decimals, you must give me three significant digits. What does that mean? Like in this case, this one starts out point zero nine. Zero is that three significant digits? I mean, yeah, I need one more. This zero up here is a placeholder, so you actually would have to have the nine zero nine. Okay. However, there are going to be times when you're going to need it in fraction form because it's easy to work with it in fraction form. So my question to you is, how do you remember how to make your calculator take a decimal and turn it into a fraction for you? Yeah, but Control where? Okay, control enter takes a fraction and makes it a decimal. I'm wanting to go in reverse. You've got the decimal. Actually, let's just do this. Um, if I did that one, oops, that's not it. What I hit? Uh, oh, escape. That's why I didn't get it. My stuff is in the way. So if I actually did this one and I went to menu, probability, got my combination, and put in my 6, 3, and then I switched down to the bottom and did menu probability combination and put in my 12 comma 3. It, it's going to spit out an, oh shoot, it went 111 for you. Okay, it went nice for you, it went 111. Well, that will turn it to the decimal, but I'm, sometimes yeah, I you're going to get decimal. Yeah. How, if you have a decimal, how do you get it to turn it back to a fraction? 
Unfortunately, no. It's not the same thing. You have to go menu. You're trying to change the number value. So we're going to go to number. And then which one would it be? Yeah, we want to turn it back to a fraction, so you have to do number two, approximate it to a fraction. In that case, that one, it couldn't get it any simpler, so it just turned it to that. But you can kick it back to a fraction. Hopefully, it'll give you fractions most of the time because that's easier to work with, particularly for the next step of this thing. Okay, so we know then that this one actually is the same thing as 1 11. Now I want to do the same exact problem, except I want to find the odds instead of the probability. So, my question to you is, can you do odds and then use the combinations to find the odds? You're still picking more than one item, but odds are successes over ways to fail. So, as far as ways to succeed, is that going to change any from the 63 we had up here? Nope. It's going to be the same. Okay. How do you fail at this? What would be failing example? Get a caramel, which are the Reese's, or a caramel and the two money. Two Reese's and a money. Anything that's not the three Reese's is wrong. So, okay, think about it. how many different ways are there to come out wrong? Tons. Do you want to do the combinations for every one of those different things that you could believe that? It would be horrible. So. That's why the big cherry circle is here. If you're going to find odds, you cannot do odds with combinations. If you're picking multiple items, you cannot do odds directly. You always have to find the probability first, and then you calculate the odds once you've got the probability. We already know odds is 1 to 11. Oh, excuse me, probability is 1 to 11. So if probability is 1 to 11, that already means I know success is over total. Close, but not quite. Which one? One to twelve or one to ten? Yeah, because there there's still only one way to succeed. But if there's eleven total, how many ways are there to fail? Oh, oh yeah, that's right. There would be ten. So your odds would be one tenth. So you always have to find probability first. If you're if you're picking more than one thing, you yeah, cannot do odds. Why would you pick Well, there's one success over eleven total. We need successes to failures. So there's still one way to succeed, so how many ways is there to fail? Yeah, if there's 11 total, then that means there's 10 ways to fail at it. So you can always get odds of probability by subtracting it, but you must do probability first. Always, 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 always do probability first. I am sure somewhere on that journal that's a question. If it isn't, I want to know it because it's a question that ought to be done. This is one of those journals where there's too many things I could ask. I could have a three-page journal if I wanted to. <laughs> I really could. There are so many things I could bug you about on this one. All right, see if you've got it. Can you do the, pro this is notice, this is probability, <coughs> not odds. The probability of getting two caramel eggs and one money egg. Are you okay? <laughs> Yes, you would. Okay, I got a 4C2. And we need to go back up. Okay, and I got a 2C1. Why did they have a 4 here? There are four caramel eggs. We are picking two of them. We need one money egg. There's two to pick from, but we only need to choose one of them. And then, okay, do I add or multiply? Multiply. Always multiply. A big hint. And means multiply. It says this and this is multiplied. Um, next class, I will throw the word or at you, and that will change things. But and always means multiply. So then dividing by, the dividing will always be one combination. So you just do in total. How many total eggs have you got? Yeah, it's 
There were 12 eggs, and how many total were we picking? Three. We picked three total eggs. So the bottom will always just be that single combination. And then you're going to crunch it with your calculator. And, whoops, I'm not even on the right page. You're hopefully going to find out. It comes out 3 over 55. So, three chances out of 55 that you're going to get two caramels and one money. That would disappoint me. I really love two caramels. Ah, if I get some extra. Then you know, I didn't say what, how much money was in there. If it's only yeah. 50 cents, that's not much. But it could be one I mean, I was a cheap mother. I don't ever put quarters in there. <laughs> Do I need to do more combinations? Yeah. 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 On the odds? Okay, if I did odds on this one, on that same thing, of the two caramel and one money, I can't spell. Okay, you don't have to do any more work. All you, you already got probabilities 3 out of 55, so you get odds directly from that. Odds is success ways to succeed over ways to fail. This is successes over total amount. So how many successes are there? There's still three. But how many ways would there be to fail? Yeah, you just simply subtract them, and that's going to tell you how many ways to fail. That's all it's going to take. So once you know one, the other is pretty simple to come up with. But to give you an example, um, several years ago, I'll pause this whole video. If you want to do a full house, you have to have three of a kind and two of a kind. So that's like three queens and two tens. Or three sevens and two jacks. You have to have three of something and two of something. Doesn't matter what, but you have to have three and two. Okay, this one is actually pretty complicated to do. Okay, so if I have to get three of a kind, that three of a kind can be three sevens, three jacks, three tens, three whatever. So, it is combination, but it's <laughs> considerably trickier, <laughs> because first I have to know, is it going to be seven, ten, jack, what is it that I'm getting three of? How many different kinds of cards are that I could get? There are 13 different cards, because there's 13 cards in the suit, there's 13 different kinds of cards. So first of all, I would have to go, oh, there are 13 kinds of cards I can pick. I need one of them because I need it to be sevens or jacks. So that picks the fact that, okay, say I now know I'm doing jacks. Now I have to get three jacks. So I, have, I need a second combination to get those three jacks. How many jacks are in the deck? Four, and you're picking three. So I have to get three of a kind. And this is actually, and I have to get two of a kind. So that picks the three of a kind. Now I have to multiply, I have to get two of a kind. Okay, do I know what those two are going to be? Do I know whether they're ten, seven, king, eight? So I have to do this again. I have to go, okay, first I have to pick what kind of card is it. How many cards are there to pick? Kinds of cards. Ten, seven, two, how many would be left there to pick from? Why 12? Why not 13? You already used this one, so you can't use that same kind of card. So yeah, there would only be 12 kinds of cards left, and I would need to pick one of them. And then now, say I pick aces. How do I pick two aces? There are four aces in there, and I'm picking two. So that's an unusual one where you have to pick the kind of card and then pick the actual card you're going to play with. Okay, the good news is on the bottom... If, we, if the total is always one combination, how many total cards did we have in the whole deck? 52. And how many total cards was I picking? Five. Okay, now the question is, do I have this answer written out? Are we feeling rhythmic over there? 
it would be, well, here, let me give you the numbers this way. The top comes out to be 3,744 ways you can get a full house. And the bottom number when you do 52C5 is 2,598,960. Yeah, that's the number you're supposed to. 259,8960. Yeah, I just heard that rhythm in my head. If you, de if you decimalize that, it is point zero zero one four four. So your chances, if you go to a deck of cards one time, you allow five cards, your chances of getting a full house are less than 1%. <laughs> yeah, that's 0.1%. So on a one draw. You know, if you play multiple, multiple times, obviously you have better chances the more you play, because eventually luck may happen. It's certainly like we don't see full houses happen in playing cards, but if on a one-time chance, if you're betting your life savings on a one-time chance, don't do, that, don't do it. <laughs> That's a bad thing. <laughs> and if you, uh, actually, if you, you all know what a royal flush is, the best possible hand you could have. Yeah. In it's the top five cards of a suit. Okay. So how many ways would there be to get a royal flush? Four. There'd be the top five cards in four different suits. So it would be your chances of getting a royal flush are four out of 2,598,960. Yeah. Okay. Tiny, 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 tiny chance. <laughs> so if you ever get one, you guys get amazingly lucky. Is he okay? <laughs> All right. <laughs> I agree with that statement. Okay, I'll buy that. Okay, a couple other little probability things they're going to throw at you. For those of us who love our geometry, here's your chance. Not How hard is it? This is, this is basic middle school geometry. In this case, it, 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 this could be, in fact, you, is it this book? You might have one on your assignment that your chances of hitting like a, if you're playing darts, that your chances of hitting a certain ring. But in this case, you have this rectangle colored yellow with a circle in the middle. You want the probability that you're going to hit the yellow. How would you figure that out? <laughs> areas. Areas, yeah. <laughs> I need to know what's the area of the yellow versus the area out of the whole thing to get the probability. Okay, which one's easier, the area of the hole or the area of the yellow? The area of the hole is easiest. How would you get the area of the hole? <laughs> it's a rectangle, yeah. Area of the hole is 4 times 10 or 40. Okay, how am I going to get the area of the yellow? That's a curved side. Yeah, couldn't you take the rectangle, subtract the circle out of it? <coughs> we already know the rectangle 40. Uh, all right, what's the area of a circle? Oh, pi, r pi r squared, thank you. In this case, what's the radius? They are telling you it's 2. So it would be whatever 40 minus 4 pi is. And I actually don't think for some reason, I don't think I have this worked out. I don't even have this problem on this sheet of paper. So I don't know the decimal value of that one. But <coughs> Somebody with a calculator with visibly fast fingers. Where's Pi at? It's down on left, bottom left. What now? Oh. 0 0.68? 0 0.68? 0 0.68? Okay. No, 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 no. 0 points. Okay, that's better. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So about a little over 68% chance. And that looks pretty reasonable. You can estimate that. That's reasonable, about 68% of that rectangle. That's a tolerable answer. Okay, so that's how you do the geometric probability. You just do it with area. No major big deal. Um, you know, if, you're, if you shoot, 
when you're shooting nuclear missiles or, or, or just missiles in general and you want to hit a certain region, they want to calculate the probability. <laughs> okay, what's the area of the whole region? What's the area that our missile is likely to hit? <laughs> There's your probability. <laughs> you hope they're pretty accurate. Okay, um, last little thing I want to talk about this, and I think it is on your journal. It better be on your journal. There's what we call experimental probability, and there's what we call theoretical probability. <coughs> Are we going to do much for this? No, this is just definitions. Okay. What we have been calculating today is theoretical probability. It's what you, theoretical is what you get when you do the math on it, and you calculate it with mathematical formulas. Okay, but I could have also attempted to get the probability of a full house out of a deck of cards by doing it experimentally. I could have sat there with my deck of cards, dealt out five, and, get, and went, did I get a full house? Yes or no, and tallied it. Then I can deal out another five cards. Okay. Yes or no, did I get it? Deal out another five cards, yes or no. Now, so experimental probability means to actually do the task over and over and over. And you have to do it enough times to take away the luck, but take away streaks, actual winning streaks. You have to do thousands, millions of times to have an accurate experimental probability. But you actually perform it. Today, we don't sit there and do experimental probabilities with our, cal with our cards in our hands. We do, do, we do it at a computer or on a calculator. Um, you, I haven't actually looked at it. You should have an app where you can play card games and it will do the probability. It will sit, sit there and play the card games a billion times and then tell you how many times you won and how many times you lost. So experimental probability means to actually try it. Will that guarantee you'll get the same answer if you do it experimentally as if you do it with formulas? Yeah, unless you run that experiment so many times you completely del deleted all chances of lucky streaks, they won't necessarily be the same. Sometimes some situations are really complicated and there isn't a formula for us to do it with and then we have to do it experimentally. But okay, you can let a computer sit there and run an experiment two billion times and it won't take it that long to do it because it just keeps be playing the game over and over and over. So experimental probability is when we actually perform an experiment many times to estimate the probability. So we could roll, I think you have a question, one question on your problem. Where it, tell, it shows you, you just sat and rolled dice a whole <coughs> bunch of times and what numbers you got every time you rolled the dice. Does that Which number is most likely to come up if you roll two dice? One. What is the most common winning number? Five. None of you play crap, obviously. Oh, seven. Seven. Oh. Why would seven be the most common winning number on dice? Because that's the, the lowest the amount you can get on it's got the most combinations you can make it with. You can make it with one and six, two and five, three and four. There are more ways to make seven on with a set of dice than anything else. So seven is the most likely number. No, two dice. Two. Yeah, no, you couldn't get seven on one. <laughs> right there. So you can actually, you can experimentally sit and roll the dice and see what happens. And if we have time on review day, we are going to do some experimental probability for fun. See what happens. <laughs> All right. Oh, holy moly.